Hello, welcome back to my channel. Oshle here and you are watching Oshi Reads. And today's video is a little bit different from the videos I usually do here on my channel, but I was so inspired and so motivated to do this by just my intuition, the way I've been feeling this past year and, and honestly the past several years, as well as some videos I've been watching here on YouTube recently that have really given me the push that I needed to go ahead and make this decision for 2020. And of course, if you've read the title, then you know what I'm talking about. And I am talking about making 2020 a no buy year for me and starting my no buy journey. Now, for many of you who may have not heard of this term before, it is sort of a movement here on YouTube. A lot of times you'll see it in the minimalist community, but you'll also just see it with people who are tired of being a slave to consumerism, a slave to feeling, you know, just financially strapped all the time, like you're making poor financial decisions, or maybe you just want to change some buying habits that have become toxic or you've, you've started to rely on to kind of ease your life. So many people have heard of the term retail therapy. That's basically where you use shopping or purchasing things. It may not necessarily be clothing or shoes or jewelry. It may not be the typical items, but basically it's where you use purchasing things and materials goods to satisfy a, a need right an emotional need a mental need something outside of you that uh, is lacking so either it's you know your emotional health is not the best or you're really stressed out at work you know you, you hear about people who stress eat uh, it's sort of a similar thing in the sense that you comfort yourself with shopping you comfort yourself with buying things acquiring things so if you've had a bad day your instinct is to go out and shop you know if maybe you're not going out then you're shopping online or if you're feeling sad about something maybe you're going through a hard time whatever the case may be your instinct is to sort of soothe yourself with going out and buying something that you either need or don't need a lot of times it's something that we don't need <laughs> we also have this new generation of the impulse buyer right with things like the one-click option on Amazon it's so easy especially if you have Amazon Prime where you have two-day shipping for free to just buy things on a whim maybe you see an ad on Instagram or Facebook or it's something that you've wanted for a while or even something you just watched a YouTube video about and one of your favorite influencers has it and so you decide to go ahead and impulsively purchase it right so we have entered the age of the impulse buy we've entered the age where people are you know, living more now above their means than ever before. Credit is at an all time high. And we've also reached a stage where you see a lowering in certain things like the percentage of people in a certain age bracket, usually in the millennial generation who are homeowners is very low compared to past generations. Uh, people are worried about retirement. Now more than ever, people are not saving for retirement anymore or they don't have the means to save for retirement. I could go on and on uh, when you look at the financial aspects of things. We're definitely living in a different time. We're definitely living in a more material time, a more consumerism driven time. And for many people, we're just tired. We're tired of it. We want to change our habits and we want to do something that's going to, at the end of the road, in the long term, benefit us, not just in our savings account, but just also mental health and emotional health wise. Uh, so now I want to go into the personal reasons for why I've decided to do a no buy year. And then I will end this video by telling you my no buy year plans. Because unlike what the title suggests or the name suggests, it doesn't mean that I'm not buying anything at all in 2020. So there are specific rules. So I will go into that at the end because that will be specific to me and to what I'm planning on not spending on, what I'm planning on not spending my money on for 2020. But right now I want to talk to you about my personal reasons for doing a no buy year. So people have many many reasons for wanting to cut back on spending a lot of it is of course about finances and saving and building better financial habits for me personally while that is certainly the case i also want to break bad habits and i want to disassociate spending money and shopping and materialism i want to disassociate that from any emotional feelings i may or may not be having so for me i am someone that definitely used retail therapy as a coping mechanism 
in the past, whenever I had a bad day at work or I was super stressed out or was going through a rough patch in life, I would go out and shop. Especially living in New York City in my 20s, it was very easy, everything was very accessible, you just go out into the city, there are tons of boutiques, and now with online shopping really taking off, you don't even have to leave the comfort of your own home. Also for me, I definitely fall prey to that Amazon click with one buy setting, I have Amazon Prime, and I just found myself impulsively buying things on a whim a lot. I found myself you know, just naturally turning to buying things and shopping as a way to cope with, you know, emotional turmoil or life stresses. And I really want to break that habit and I want to disassociate that, uh, those two things in my mind. Uh, it takes 30 days to build a habit and so I'm thinking 365 days in 2020, roughly 52, is it 52 weeks in a year or 54? should be more than enough time for me to build new habits and really be able to set myself up for success for the future when it comes to my financial life. So I have a lot of financial goals that I would like to reach. I would like to spend less money on things and focus more on experiences and memories and traveling and building my brand and my business and really pouring myself creatively into what I love doing and not so much as giving my money over to other companies and corporations out there. Also, I think that growing up the way that I did where it's not necessarily that money was tight but my parents were very strict and they certainly did not buy us a lot of things. We were very regimented in the things that we were allowed in terms of toys and gadgets and things like that. Uh, I will say that my mom was very lenient with me in my teenage years with clothing and that actually you know, helped to build a habit of me just loving and buying clothes. I will say that during my teenage years, I had way more clothes than any one girl should possibly own and my mother really indulged that habit in me which I then carried over into to adulthood uh, into adulthood but I think the deprivation in other areas of like gadgets and toys and books and things like that also carried over into adulthood in the sense that once I was able to make financial decisions for myself and I was supporting myself I kind of went overboard in those areas and just buying and buying and buying and spending and spending and spending. So for me, this no buy year is about building new habits, disassociating shopping and materialism from any emotional need or void, and also trying to set myself up for success in the future and trying to pour more of my energies into myself creatively, into putting creative things out into the world and less into spending money and giving these corporations my money. I would love to build my savings account. I would love to really feel secure about my future and not so stressed out and feeling as if I am, you know, in this rat race and running this hamster wheel and things are never going to get better. So now that I've given you my personal reasons for doing a no buy year, I kind of want to go into who inspired this and what inspired this and what was the catalyst for me finally deciding to do this for 2020. I have been watching videos about minimalism for years and while I really respect that lifestyle and the minimalism movement that has really taken off here in the last couple years, it's not certain it's not something that I'm interested in doing in my personal life because I do enjoy having things and I do really enjoy material possessions. I do definitely want to reorganize my priorities and not put them so high up on the list, but I do enjoy having things and I don't think that I would be able to live a minimal a minimalist lifestyle successfully. So while I do respect those that decide to undertake that and decide to live that way, it's just not for me at all. It's definitely not for me, but that is how I found out about the whole no buy thing. And then a fellow YouTuber here recently made a video that was my final and last push to decide to do it for this year. I've been thinking about it for the last couple weeks because I started looking at my bank statements and seeing how much money I spent on food in 2019 and I was horrified to say the least. I am so guilty of eating out and just my work life has been so stressful and tumultuous in the past year and a half or so and it's always seemed like an extra burden to prepare my own meals at home even though i now live in my own space and i have a wonderful and large kitchen where i can definitely prepare my own lunches and dinners and breakfasts a lot of times i do become overwhelmed because my work life is so stressful and i often just feel as if it's easier to just order out order lunch out come home order dinner and I've been using a lot of Uber Eats, 
DoorDash and Postmates. And when I finally just started getting sick of it and started feeling like I was just overdoing it and spending way too much money on it, I finally took the plunge in the sense of looking at my bank statements for 2019. And when I added up the amount of money that I actually spent on eating out in 2019, you guys, I don't even wanna tell you because it makes me sick to my stomach. And when I realized that that amount of money could have been put into my savings account or used for something definitely more worthwhile, I was mortified. And that's when I started to feel this, this urge inside of me to definitely start to change my habits and take a look at the ways that I'm spending my money unnecessarily and foolishly. Then, like I said, a YouTuber here who is a part of our community, but she also makes, um, I would describe her videos as very philosophical and deep thinking. She deep dives into certain topics. I will put her channel name here, and I believe her name is pronounced Cynthia. If I'm wrong, please, please correct me in the comments. I absolutely adore her and her content. I've been watching her now for years, and she is so inspirational. She's so intelligent, and everything she has to say is so important and truly feeds your soul in a way that you never even realized that you needed. She is a brilliant mind and you know she used to do mainly book related videos and she's been doing them for so long you guys. I think she's been on YouTube for over nine years but she's recently transformed her channel and rebranded and now she's branching out and making more philosophical videos and talking about other topics. But she recently made a video talking about her no buy year that she just is finishing up here in 2019 and that was the final sign from God that I needed to do this, this going into 2020. So thank you so much, Cynthia, for really giving me that push and being the voice of clarity that I needed in these final weeks. But I am super excited for my no buy year of 2020. And now I will talk to you about my no buy rules. All right. So first I wanna talk about the things that I'm not allowed to buy and then I'm gonna to talk to you guys about my exceptions. Yes, there are exceptions. Like I said, you tailor your no buy year to you. It's not about restriction. It's not about cutting yourself off from things or feeling like you can't do something. It's about changing habits and really making decisions that are going to enrich and improve your life in the long run. So as you can guess, number one, I am no longer allowed to get take out or to eat out, whatever you want to call it, take out, take away, eating out. All of those apps have now been deleted off my phone. I no longer have Uber Eats, DoorDash or Postmates on my phone, so I'm not going to be tempted. I will not re-download them because I'm still truly horrified by how much money I spent eating out this year. So going into 2020, I will not be eating out at all. It's so much cheaper to buy your own food, you guys. It's insanely cheaper. And now I actually have been ordering off of Whole Foods and I get the, the groceries delivered to me because Amazon purchased Whole Foods and they have like a delivery system. So I can literally go on Amazon, order some of my grocery items from Whole Foods and they get to me within an hour or two. So between Whole Foods and several other grocery stores in my area, I'm able to get enough food for the week, but I do shop bi-weekly. So every two weeks I purchase groceries and I am finally ready to commit to that. I've been doing that for the past week and let me just tell you that I have spent nowhere near how much I spent before when I was doing takeout. Rule number two is I will not be allowed to purchase any digital content. So I'm already a subscriber to Netflix, Hulu, and Disney Plus, so there really is no reason for me to be purchasing, you know, DVDs or, or not purchasing, but streaming. Wow, nobody purchases DVDs anymore, or at least not really. But there's no reason for me to be streaming things that I have to pay for or renting streaming movies online or anything like that. Since I am paying for all of those streaming apps already, I'm not going to be making any extra purchase purchases where movies are involved and that goes the same for music i have apple music i also have pandora i'm not going to pay for spotify that would be a waste so i have access to so much music so many artists right there on my phone i can stream so i'm not going to be buying any music in 2020 is clothing and shoes. I will not be buying any new clothes in 2020. I am very proud to say that I am very conscious of where I purchase my clothes with the exception of the few kind of 
um, niche clothing items that I buy for specific events that I usually purchase on Amazon. I'm very guilty of that. I do not participate in fast fashion. I buy all of my clothes secondhand. I'm a big, big believer in thrifting for all clothing items. Uh, I do buy my shoes new because I just can't stand the thought of secondhand shoes. I, I don't know guys, I'm weird, I'm a germaphobe, I just can't. I don't know why I'm okay with the clothes but not okay with the shoes, it's a weird thing. But I always am a big proponent, big, big proponent of thrifting and that's what I've done for the past three to four years now. But <laughs> I will not be thrifting in 2020. I will not be buying any new clothes. I will not be buying any new shoes. I will not be buying any jewelry. I am going to be focusing on the jewelry that I have. I'm very simple and I pretty much wear the same jewelry every single day, so I will continue that habit. And I will not be buying any makeup. I own so much makeup that I barely wear. In the past year, I've really cut back on my makeup wearing. I have eyeshadow palettes that I don't even use because I haven't been wearing eyeshadow for the past two years or so. So I'm going to be focusing on the makeup that I own and then I'm going to watch my habits for the next six months and whatever makeup I find that I'm not wearing at all or using, I will be either throwing away or donating or giving away. No clothes, no shoes, no jewelry, no makeup. Exception is for trips and weather related situations. So if I need to buy, let's say, uh, a umbrella it's not really clothing but it's a miscellaneous item because my umbrella broke or if my rain boots get a hole in them I probably won't buy new rain boots I'll probably just try to find a place where I can fix them like a shoe place that fixes shoes uh, so I can continue to use them or if I'm on vacation and I didn't bring something with me and it's an emergency and I need a going out outfit or I need something then I'm allowed to buy clothes but those are the only exceptions buy any new underwear unless I ruin my underwear you know sometimes periods ruin underwear I know TMI but I have a lot of underwear so I think I should be fine but I won't be buying any new underwear in 2020 I won't be buying any new workout clothes in 2020 or sneakers or workout shoes in 2020 buying any knickknacks so any little like knickknacks that lay around the house or niche things that really have no purpose but are just decorative and pretty I won't be buying any of those in 2020 I will not be buying any new gadgets in 2020. My goal is to focus on the gadgets that I already have. I have a Kindle already, I have a Kindle Fire, I have about three laptops, I have a camera that while I could definitely use a better camera, it doesn't shut off when it overheats. It's still working, I'm filming on it right now, it's decent, and I have a microphone now for my camera that I need to start using. I have a webcam that's actually pretty decent. My lights are pretty decent, so I'm not gonna be buying any new gadgets. I'm definitely not buying a new iPhone. I still have my iPhone 8 Plus and I'm holding on to it for dear life. I finally paid it off and my phone bill is so low and I refuse to buy a new iPhone. I don't care how great the camera is. Not really be, be getting my hair done in 2020. So as you guys know, I often wear braids throughout the year and what you guys don't know, what you guys don't know is those braids usually cost me anywhere between $200 to $300 depending upon the size the length and the thickness of the braids so there are a lot of variables involved and you know even though I only really get braids and or twists twists tend to cost a little bit more every three to four months that's still several times more than several times a year so it's every three to four months so it's at least three to four times a year and those amounts add up and that has no nothing to do with the tip which I always leave a tip because my hair braider is a magician and she never braids in such a way where I lose any of my hair and it's actually helped to grow my hair on my natural hair journey I did it for two years to grow up my hair to this length so I definitely was very grateful for you know doing those styles continuously and spending the money while I could but at that time I didn't have as many financial responsibilities as I do right now now I have a car payment and rent and car insurance and renters insurance and a plethora of other bills so it just it's just gonna be way too expensive and I also am not going to be going to anyone else to do my hair for 2020 not just a braider I won't be getting my hair professionally straightened or done with a professional hairstylist I will be doing my hair myself in 2020 all 2020 long which is certainly going to save me a boatload of money I'm actually really excited about it 
I actually had a hair appointment set up for Christmas Eve because I wanted to get my hair straightened for Christmas and I realized that no, I don't need to spend that $75. I'm going to save that and start my no buy year with my hair already before we're even in 2020. I do have a lot of hair goals. I am on a hair growing journey and I do have hair length goals for 2020 and I just wanna be able to take that power and control over my hair and how it grows and the health of it into my own hands and be responsible for responsible for that myself instead of paying for someone else to take care of my hair. I really want to learn my hair, learn what it likes, what it thrives on, and you know, just really be able to take care of my hair myself and have it be healthy because of knowledge that I know and that I've gained because I'm taking in an active role in my hair journey and I'm an active participant in you know caring for my hair. Another thing that I will not be spending money on in 2020, and those, this goes with the eating out, is buying water bottles. I have a reusable water bottle that I use now. Now, I do admit to buying like the fizzy water with a little bit of flavor in it because I really struggle with drinking water and those little fizzy waters with the flavor really helps me to get my water intake and those unfortunately come in plastic bottles and I also have started drinking alkaline water and those also come in plastic bottles so I haven't yet made a full-on decision about that because the alkaline water has really been helping me health wise so I'm not 100% sure on that yet I'm still giving it some thought but for the most part, I am encouraging myself to drink just regular plain old water and to refill my reusable water bottle as often as I can. Another thing that I will not be spending money on in 2020 is toys for my dogs. <laughs> they have a lot of toys already and you know they have so many toys and I, I only give them certain toys at a time so they don't get tired of all of them. So I'll put out like one toy here, three toys here and put the rest away so that they can play with those. And then when they get tired of those, I switch them out like every week or so. So I keep a rotation going. So they never really get sick of any one toy. I also don't want to be buying them like little clothings or, or little knickknacks and um, blankets and things like that. They have more than enough of those things and we're just gonna use up what we got. Now, we will talk about replacements in a little bit, but for now, we're just using what we got. Now, along with the hair thing that I was talking about a, a little earlier, is I will not be spending money on a plethora of hair accessories. Now, again, we will talk about replenishing things and rebuying things that are finished in just a bit, but I do have a rule for hair accessories. So if I wanna buy like hair bands and bows and things and bobs, I have a hair care routine that I will commit myself to following and if I follow my hair care routine for a month straight with no slacking off and just being really diligent about things, then I am allowed to reward myself by buying like one hair accessory or two, but certainly not a plethora like I'm used to doing. Usually I buy like five, six, or eight, or 10 at, at one time, and now it's just gonna be one or two after a full month of following my hair care regimen diligently, not taking any breaks and being responsible about that. Another miscellaneous thing I want to talk about has to do with my car and I will not be paying for car washes anymore. Uh, I will say that in 2019 I paid two or three times to have my car washed. Basically I went to this one place where I drove it through and they washed it and then they vacuumed and shined the inside and it was like 30, anywhere between 30 to $60 depending on the package that you choose. But from now on I will be washing my car myself. My apartment building actually has a car port car washing area that I can take advantage of and also it's just something fun to do especially as the weather will start getting warmer and I can certainly clean the inside of my car myself and wash it down myself. If worse comes to worse I can drive over to my parents house and do it in their driveway. They do it with their cars and they're saving a ton of money so that's something that I will not be doing in 2020 is paying for car washes. Now I want to talk about the things that I am allowed to buy. Now that we went on that long list of things I'm not allowed to buy, let's talk about the things I am allowed to buy. So in 2020, I do have things that I'm allowed to buy, but there are rules. So I'm allowed to buy something if I finish it. So if I finish my moisturizer, I can buy a new moisturizer. I'm not allowed to buy, you know, five different moisturizers and five different scents and, oh, this new moisturizer is out from this brand and this new, no, 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 no. I am just going to buy 
the replacement of the moisturizer that I finished. And honestly, you guys, I have so many moisturizers and body oils. It's probably gonna take a really long time until I go through all of them, because that's another thing. If I have more than one type of an item, I'm gonna use up everything I have before I replace it with a new one. So that's my rule. Oh, another thing for the no buy, no perfumes. I have a ton of perfumes already and, and roll-on oils and scented oils and all that and I need to use them up so I'm not buying any perfumes in 2020. Sorry, that was a segue. But yes, I am allowed to, to uh, repurchase or replenish something that has been depleted but if I have more than one of that particular thing then I'm going to use all of them up before I replenish and I'm only going to be doing one at a time and not a variety so for example I used to be very guilty of going to Bath and Body Works and loading up on the bath gels and the lotions and the candles and the diffusers and the this and the that and the hand creams. I am very proud of myself to say that I have not done that in the past several years because one year I went so heavy and I bought so much that it actually lasted me for three years and after that I promised myself never again because even though you save a lot of money you're also spending a lot of money and that mentality of like oh it's on sale it's on sale it's on sale is actually a trap and it's a marketing ploy to get you to spend more so I am very proud to say that after that one year where I just really lost my ma my mind at Bath and Body Works, I have not done it again. But I, now I buy one candle at a time, and unless I'm, I'm gifted a candle or, or sent one in a promo box, I buy one candle at a time, and I buy one hand lotion at a time, one body lotion at a time. I have certainly learned my lesson. Um, also, I had to cut up my Victoria's Secret card because we will not be going to Victoria's Secret in 2020. So yes, I'm allowed to buy food and replenish that, laundry detergent when it finishes, um, dryer sheets, I use dryer sheets, I like them. When they finish, I'm allowed to purchase pretty much anything that I'm already using when it's my collection is completely depleted or if I just have one of it when it's gone, I'm allowed to repurchase and replenish. Now for the book buying, what you guys wanna know about. So, I did not wanna ban myself from buying books in 2020 because I do love buying books i really enjoy it and i don't go as crazy as i used to i do really enjoy pre-ordering books too books that i'm like highly anticipating but i do have a ton of unread books on my shelf so i did come up with a rule for myself that i think i'm i'm pretty proud of it and i think i can stick to but for every 10 books i read off of my shelf and not off my kindle but physical books off my shelf i can purchase five new books so for every 10 I read, I can purchase five new ones, but I can only purchase a total of 10 books every quarter. So every three months, within those three months, I could have only purchased 10 new books. That is my cutoff. I honestly don't even think I'm going to be able to do that many because like I said, my spending habits with books have really changed. But that is my rule for buying books. I do plan on utilizing the library a lot more in 2020. And I'm actually really excited to go back to the library because I, oh, I used to love going so much and I miss it. I really miss it. So I want to utilize the library. I want to utilize my Audible membership and listen to more audiobooks. And I thought about getting rid of Audible, but I actually use it, you guys. When I'm driving, I, I listen to audiobooks every day. So I'm going to utilize my Audible membership more. I'm going to utilize my library card more. And I'm just really excited. I'm so excited. Ah! Oh, I remembered one thing I'm not going to be doing in 2020. I'm not going to be spending money on nails. So for a while there, I was getting my nails done every two weeks, <laughs> getting pedicures once a month. Nada. Not doing any of that in 2020. I'll be doing my nails myself, both my hands and my feet. I'll be taking care of my own nails, painting my own nails, and grooming them myself. So that will save me a ton of money. I've already I stopped it, I would say, over the summer, and I have not looked back, and I don't plan on ever going back to professionally getting my nails done. It's just so much money and it's something that I enjoy doing myself and that I can do myself quite easily. Another thing that I already stopped spending money on is getting my eyebrows done. <laughs> They're overgrown right now, but I actually do my own eyebrows. <laughs> I actually don't 
tweeze or pluck I shave them little eyebrow shavers I just shave them myself every like once a week or so or once every two weeks and I like it I like the way they look when I do them myself I'm never unhappy or dissatisfied like a lot of the times when I would leave the salon or the nail shop or wherever from getting my eyebrows waxed I would always be really unhappy with the results so I just I just have taken back the power and I've been doing them myself for most of 2019 and that's a habit I plan on carrying into 2020. Another thing is that I am allowed to spend money on is my gym membership. I plan on keeping my gym membership for the next six months and just really utilizing my gym. Now if it just comes down to the fact that I notice a pattern where I'm just not going as much as, as I feel like it would be financially worth, then after six months of 2019 I will be allowed to cancel my gym membership and just work out solely from home. I will say my gym membership is really inexpensive because it's one of those Planet Fitness ones that I got on a deal, so at least it's not breaking the bank. But if after six months I'm not utilizing it as much as I feel I should, it's getting canceled. Another thing that I'm allowed to spend money on in 2020 are trips and experiences. So I do have a friend's wedding that's coming up in May that I'm going to. I have another friend that's getting married in the fall and there are some book cons that I would like to attend. So I am allowed to spend money during those trips. I just am going to be budgeting very, very strictly. I'm not going to be spending money outside of the necessities on those trips and I'm going to be saving and budgeting very, very strictly for those trips. Obviously, I'm allowed to replenish my cleaning items. I don't buy a lot of cleaning items as it is. I have two cleaners that I use to clean up pretty much my entire home, so I will be allowed to replenish those when they finish up. And the funny thing is that I buy my cleaners at the dollar store anyway, so it's like a dollar or so and some change for each cleaner, and they work really, really well. A lot of times when you're spending a ton of money on cleaners, you're paying for the name of the company and the brand and not the cleaner itself. So these are cleaners that I've been using for years without fail. I've been always buying from the dollar store and I will continue to do so. So I will replenish those when they're finished. Another thing that I'm allowed to spend money on is home furnishings. So I am in the middle of completely furnishing my home. I moved into this home in April of this year and I'm coming up on a year pretty soon. But I didn't really start decorating my home until I had saved up enough money to really buy the furnishings for it. So I finally entered it into that phase where I've saved up, saved up enough money to actually furnish my home and I've been really enjoying the process. So I am allowed to furnish my home but I'm not going to be buying any extras. So any decorative knickknacks and seasonal decor I will not be spending money on but this the usual couch rug few pictures for the walls plants things that really make a home cozy curtains I will be spending money on and I do plan on doing a bookish home tour when I am all done another thing I'm going to be really strict about that I'm allowed to spend money on but again I'll be strict about is eating out um, as you as I mentioned earlier, I will not be doing takeaway or takeout when I'm by myself, but when I go out with my friends, I am allowed to eat out. I will, however, be very careful about what I choose from the menu. It's probably going to be ordering off of the sides menu. That's actually a trick, you guys, when you go into a restaurant, that if you just buy two sides, a lot of times that will be filling and enough for you and you won't be spending money on a full entree. Another trick is not buying an appetizer, and a big, big trick is not buying any alcohol. So that's Another thing in 2020 I will not be spending money on is buying alcohol on my own. But when I'm out with friends, I will kind of choose the times when I will choose to drink alcohol, but I will try to make it kind of a 80-20 thing. So 80% of the time I go out with my friends, I will not buy alcohol. And then those rare 20% um, where if we go to a bar, then I will get one drink. But I am a homebody for the most part. So I don't usually go out. Usually I have my friends in or I go to their homes. So I don't think I'll have an issue with that. But yeah, just offering sides menu, usually not getting alcohol, lowers your eating out bill tremendously. Not getting an appetizer, just being smart, not getting dessert, really lowers your bill. And I'm going to be very, very careful about that. Same thing with going to the movies. Uh, there's, I haven't really spent that much money on the movies. I think in 2019, I went to the movies maybe three times two or three times for films that I really, really wanted to see. Usually I'm pretty good about waiting for it to come out on Netflix or on streaming, but I was really, really good this past year and only went three times. So I plan on continuing that habit into 2020. I usually only go see films that I just have to see on the big screen and I usually wait uh, for other films to come out on streaming services.
it. I can't think of anything else. I really should have made a list before I started filming this video, but I kind of filmed it on a whim and I wanted to get it up for you guys soon before the end of 2019. So let me know in the comments if any of you guys would be interested in doing something like this in the future or if you're already doing this. Definitely let me know what your thoughts are or if I've missed anything not to buy or to cut back on. Then also let me know as well if you have any tips and tricks on how to save. Let me know. I am open and welcome to all the advice I can get because this is definitely going to be an experience. Oh, I forgot something. Coffee. I deleted my Starbucks app today. I finally used up my last gift card that I got from someone and I deleted my Starbucks app. I am no longer going to be spending money at Starbucks for 2020. I'm not going to be going by myself to get a single coffee or tea when I love coffees and teas and I make them at home. So that should be a huge money saving thing. I can't believe I forgot that one. That was one of the big ones. Um, if I do end up meeting up with a friend for coffee, then I can obviously buy coffee because I'll be there in a social outing. But I don't really meet up with my friends in coffee places. My friends aren't those type of people, <laughs> ironically. So that should probably save me quite a bit of money. But on that note, I'm going to go now before I start remember remembering other random things. I will catch you all in my next video. Mwah! Bye. Thanks for watching. <laughs>